This is the WizPi USB 5 gigabit Ethernet adapter, and it comes in this box with uh, two of these USB C cables. They're 15 centimeters, so not that long, but that's about as long as uh, most dongles that you'd buy with integrated cables. It's supposed to come with one of these and one that's USB A to C, but I got two USB C to C. I don't know why it did that. But inside it has a Realtek RTL 8157 chip capable of any Ethernet speed up to 5 gigabits. So it'll do 10, 100, uh, 1 gig, 2.5 gig, or 5 gigabits. And it's the first cheap 5 gig adapter I found at 35 bucks. That's right in the same range as my 2.5 gig adapters, like this one from Anchor. But out of the box, how does it work? Well, I first tried it on my Mac, my Mac Studio that's in the rack down here, and I saw it has a couple LEDs for connection and activity and another LED on the other side to show that it's getting power from the computer. That's kind of handy because that way you can tell, even if you're not jacked into the network, if the thing's getting power and plugged in. I plugged the other end into this Microtik S plus RJ10 module and plugged that into my 10 gig switch. The reason I used this module in particular was that it supports 1, 2.5, 5, and 10 gigs. A lot of 10 gig switches and SFP modules only support 1 or 10. But back on my Mac, I checked in system preferences, and this was showing up as USB 5G Ethernet. But when I looked at the hardware details screen, it was showing up as 100 base T, meaning my Mac thought that it was only capable of 100 megabits. But when I ran iPerf3 to check the speed, I was able to get about 3.4 gigabits, so it's probably just a bug in the display in the macOS network system preferences. It might not know what 5 gigs is. So next I plugged it into my studio PC, running Windows 11, and it showed up originally at 2.5 gigabits or 2500 megabits. So I went to WizDPy's website and found a link to the Realtek driver download. After installing the driver, the link speed was showing now as 5 gigabits, and running iPerf3, I was getting nearly 5 gigabits, so almost a full gigabit faster than I was getting on my Mac Studio, probably down to something in the driver support. Also, as a side note, when you're testing bandwidth on Windows, make sure you use a new version of iPerf3 because the ones in the default website are really old. I have a whole blog post about that on my website. The last test was I plugged this into a Raspberry Pi 5 using a USB A to C adapter. And, you know, the listing said it would come with that, but mine only had two C to C adapters, so I had to go dig in my boxes back here and find one of those adapters. What's really weird on the Pi is that ETHTOOL is showing it as half duplex at 705 megabits, which I'd never seen that speed before. And if I ran it a few more times, sometimes it would show up as half duplex 2.5 gig. Not sure what's up with that. But testing with iPerf3, it was limited to 2.5 gigabits without an extra driver install. So you might have to recompile the Linux kernel or do something else to get the driver onto a Pi or into other SBCs like it. Um, but that's part of, the, part of the thing with using newer chips in these uh, newer devices. Sometimes the drivers aren't just built in. But the thermals were really good. Unlike my 10 gig adapters that'll pretty much burn your skin when you touch them, this thing only got up to about 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And you know, before I wrap up this video, I also noticed I've had this sitting on my desk for like two or three months now. This is uh, from Hacker Gadgets, and this might be the world's smallest USB Ethernet adapter. There's USB-C on this side and an Ethernet jack on the other side. You literally just plug it into your switch, plug this into your computer with the USB-C cable, and that's it. I first found out about this on Twitter. Hacker Gadget's uh, Valir actually posted about it on Twitter, and I asked, could I test one of these? Because it looks so cool and, and interesting, and it's, it's, I'm pretty sure this is the smallest Ethernet adapter I've ever seen. I don't know if there's one smaller. It would be hard to get much smaller. You basically have the USB-C port and the actual connector. The only way would be to really build the chip, the Realtek chip, into the actual connectors. I think this is about as small as you can get. Uh, but I did test this. I plugged it into a few different computers, including the Pi and, and my Mac. I, I noticed that one thing about this design, which could be fixed because this is just a 3D printed shell, uh, it, it had like 0.2 millimeters too much 3D printed shell here. Uh, it wouldn't work in some SFP jacks, but it does work in most normal jacks. But if you have a tight space, this might need a little bit of a redesign. And I, I was getting a, a gigabit. It was fine. And I talked to Hacker Gadgets about this. Uh, it sounds like this thing might go to production someday, but right now there are a lot of other priorities. And there could also be a 2.5 gig version at some point, but it would have to be a little bit bigger. And I don't know how the thermals would do. This thing doesn't get hot because it's only one gig. Uh, but 2.5 or 5 gigs would probably get a little hot. But that brings me back to this thing. Uh, 1 gig, 2.5 gig, 5 gigabits, 
uh, you know, one gig gear is available for pretty much any price point and any kind of design. Fanless things, cheap boxes, big boxes with lots of ports. And for most people still, one gigabit is plenty fine. So something like this is not really necessary, but it is nice to have that ability to go up to 2.5 or 5 gigabits if your network supports it. So the fact that this is about the same size as these other 2.5 gig adapters, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, it's nice to be able to throw this in my bag and I can always have the fastest ethernet available. But even if you don't go to 5 gigs, uh, there are tons of 2.5 gig options out there. Like this guide from Serve the Home shows a ton of different cheap switches that you can buy. Most of them fanless and a lot of them are really good performance and they don't get that hot, they don't use much power. That's a really good upgrade from 1 gig if you do things like have a NAS on your network or you want to transfer files or do screen sharing, things like that. And I even have one of these, it's a 2.5 gig switch at this desk that I work at because I like to jack things into it and, and test them. And so many devices now have 2.5 gigs. It's so much faster to copy things back and forth like that. Uh, but you know, 5 gig switches or even 10 gig switches that support 5 gigabits are still pretty rare. This is the first cheap adapter I found for it. And I really haven't found a switch that I would classify as cheap uh, that does 5 gigabits natively. It's, it's almost easier to find 10 gig gear and then buy SFP plugs that work with 5 gigabits. But that's its own problem. <laughs> a lot of times I'll buy a, a, a jack that says that it works with 5 gigs and it ends up not working with 5 gigs or 2.5 gigs. Um, so anyway, that's just something to keep in mind. But as my HVAC system turns on, I think that's a good time to wrap this little video up. Um, I think that's a good reason why this, this little WizDepi guy, uh, it, it negotiates at 2.5 or 1 gigabit if you don't have 5 gigabits, and that's great because you can upgrade as you're able to. And the best thing about 5 gigs is it usually works over whatever cabling you already have. If you have Cat5e or something like that, you can still get 5 gigabits. It might not work with 10 gigs. Anyway, this is way smaller than the 10 gig boxes. 5 gigs is still very fast, and uh, it travels anywhere. So. I highly recommend it. It's it's a great little box. I hope to see a few other companies like Anchor and Belkin and whoever else start making these uh, because more is better as long as it's the same price and not burning your hand.